What's up my musician friends? Welcome back to the channel. Now as you can already tell by the delightful thumbnail which led you to this video that today's presentation is going to be extremely value packed. So if you're ready for that, let's buckle up and go. We're going to be talking about the number one skill that performance musicians have in common who book well paid gigs. So let's carry on and get going here. Now, before I reveal what this number one skill is, we're going to start by addressing some of your own theories that I can just hear already are bubbling to the forefront of your minds right now. We're gonna dismantle those incorrect ideas with love, of course. So, I hear a lot of you thinking already, oh, the only skill that matters is being really good, being technically super proficient, just work on your craft. I hear this quite often. A lot of musicians think that if I'm just really good, then the opportunities will come my way, the gigs will come my way, I'll get paid what I'm worth. And this is sadly untrue. It should be true, but it's not true, and I can't change the way the world works. The truth is that I see musicians all the time who are incredible at what they do, technically amazing, and should be getting paid really well for what they do, but unfortunately, they are often not. Why is this? Of course, I'm not saying that you can't be talented at all if you were going to be selling your music as a service. Of course, we need to have talent as the baseline, but I am saying that being best in your local area or in the world or whatever it is, isn't what's most important. There are other parts to the equation. Now, I feel like we need to take a second right now, just rewind a little bit and talk about, wait a second, Allison, what is a well-paid gig? What are you referring to? Well, let me just start by telling you what I am not referring to. I'm not referring to a $100 gig that you play for three hours at a bar and you have to do that seven days a week just to get by, end up getting carpal tunnel or something awful like that. It's not sustainable, not well paid gigs. Often the category that we're talking about there is bars, restaurants, retirement homes. Doing a bit of that because you love it is fine, but if you look at any musician who tries to go full time doing that, it ends up being a road to nowhere but burnout. Okay, now since we talked about what it's not, what is a well paid gig? Well, we don't need to be Katy Perry or anyone on stage. The average musician can actually get gigs that make a livable income if they're doing them on a regular basis. Where we're going to find these types of gigs is in the private event space. Things like weddings, corporate events, private events, and these gigs are plentiful, the clients love you and are willing to pay you appropriately for your service, um, and enough for a lot of musicians to make a really good living doing this on a regular basis. Okay, so at this point you're saying, Allison, I get it, well-paid gigs, private event gigs, charge appropriately, sustainable income, I get it, maybe you already knew that, that's great. Now let's move on. What is the number one skill that musicians who regularly book well-paid gigs have in common? Well, turns out that this number one skill is, do not be mad at me, but it is sales. Okay, now right away, I can again hear those thoughts bubbling to the forefront of your mind. I'm no good at sales, I don't like sales, sales isn't for me, I don't want to come across salesy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just take all those thoughts, we're gonna bundle them all up, leave them right over there on the floor. We're just gonna leave them there, okay? Now I want to attempt to describe to you all why this phenomenon happens, why the musicians who are good at sales outperform those musicians who are not, and what you can do to help yourself along the journey of getting better yourself. Now one reason this phenomenon happens that I notice is that if you think about the low paying gigs, especially at things like bars and restaurants, we are dealing with people with a capped budget and also it's often a reoccurring gig that's easy to slip into. Now, if you look at the other end of the spectrum, those musicians who are good at quote unquote selling themselves, what do they do? Well, they recognize that if they need to fill their calendar with high-end gigs, they first of all know that these gigs are often one-off. What do I mean by that? As opposed to bar and restaurants that might happen more regularly, you can feel a bit more safe. A wedding or a private event or corporate party may only be happening for that one particular client once in their lifetime or once a year or something like that. Therefore, that musician recognizes that it's really important for them to fill their pipeline with leads in order to fill their calendar. So they understand this direct correlation. These musicians who get good at sales 
and book more well-paid gigs also understand the high emotional value of their service to these types of clients, hence why they're willing to pay appropriately for a musician's service. When you think about the bar and restaurant scene, they might be having a set budget and just trying to fill a slot. Whereas for someone's wedding or a private party, there's often a lot of emotional investment in these types of events that people are willing to pay um, appropriately for so they can get the whole experience they're looking for from booking till follow up at the end. Okay, now since we are all understanding here why improving in your sales skills will be very important along your journey of booking more well-paid private events, I have five keys I want to leave you with all here today so that you can take action starting today to improve this area of your life and business. And the first key that I have for you is number one, just decide to get good at sales. Now this sounds so simple, but it's so important. It starts with a decision and the really important thing to understand is salespeople are made, they're not born. No one is naturally born good at sales. Everyone had to learn whether they were naturally introverted or extroverted or outgoing or like stuttered a lot like me, which I cut out so you guys don't hear it. <laughs> Whatever they are, everyone can start somewhere and get better at sales. And this is the funny thing because people think that you have to be really outspoken and like super confident to be good at sales, but it's actually not. I love that at all, which is what we're gonna get to next because the second key is to be a good listener. And this is really what I can say is the most important thing when it comes to being good at sales. Because I can tell you that I went from someone who was super insecure and not confident at all at sales and just felt really unnatural to someone who is pretty good. And it all it takes to be a good listener, which I was actually kind of naturally good at once I realized that. So I'm saying for you as well, if you want to get good at sales, be a good listener. It's about meeting people heart to heart. The third key I want to leave you with is understand your true value. Now, even if you start getting the inquiries for clients who might be willing to pay you appropriately for what you're worth, if you inside feel insecure and about your pricing or charging appropriately for your pricing, then you're gonna have a really hard time pulling it off. So you need to start by finding in yourself by understanding the value that you are providing people and how it is more than worth what you're asking. For example, if you're to think of someone's wedding day, really you're providing music, which is providing the feelings that is what they're always going to keep with them for the rest of their life, remembering that day. So it is something that's invaluable. And so you need to understand that there is a value surplus in terms of what they're getting, which is what you're from what you're asking. And when we have that, when we have that value surplus of someone getting way more than what we're asking for, then we're in that position where someone's happy to pay you well for your work and that's exactly where we wanna be. The fourth key I wanna leave you with is to show up. This means that when you are working with a lead and a potential client, the impression that you're giving them in the sales process is what they are going to, whether consciously or not, be expecting the actual performance to be like. So if you can show that you're responsible, that you can actually call when you say you're gonna call or whatever it is and be reliable, then this goes a super long way to making that great impression. And the fifth key and arguably the most important key is to understand your pipeline and how it works. Everyone is going to get no's when it comes to doing sales and you know booking private event gigs and that's completely normal and fine. The problem is if you only have one lead that you're dealing with and it's a no, then we have no gigs that we're working with. If you're a talented musician, your most important key I can leave you with is know how to fill your pipeline. And really understand how that pipeline works, what the power activities are in order to generate more leads. And that way you know that you always don't need to just rely on one or a handful of leads to be closed in order for you to have the calendar you're looking for, but when you have a surplus, then we can be in a position of a lot more confidence when we're actually doing the sale. So this is why it's so important to understand your pipeline, how it works, and how to build it on demand. Okay, my friends, that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me until the end here. I hope that you got some value from this video today. I hope you're ready to take some action, implement some of the tips we've been talking about here. And of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So definitely leave them in the comments section below. Let me know what you think. What do you think the number one skill is? that musicians who book well-paid gigs have in common. Do you have any questions either? Leave them in the comments, I love that. Last week when I sent out the video, YouTube video, that's where we are, 
there was so much positive response and feedback about what you guys would like to see. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. That was lovely. Please let me know more thoughts and I will definitely make videos about them. So you are my inspiration. Make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what else I can help you with. Also, I just realized I was a millennial and made an Instagram account and you can be my 31st follower if you go over to Allison underscore Legendre and that's how you can find me there. So again, thank you for joining me. So excited to see you next week and have a good one.